Okay, hello everyone, and uh, welcome to the last lightning talk of the conference. I hope you've enjoyed yourselves. This will be the FOSDEM infrastructure review, same as every year, presented by Richard and Basti. So normally I do this thing, but uh, Basti has been helping a ton and the ball of spaghetti and spit and duct tape, which I left him, uh, <laughs> he turned into, into something usable. Uh, so I'm just going to sit here on the side and I'm here around for the Q&A. But for the rest, it's Basti and it's his first public talk for RealC, so give him a big round of applause. <laughs> Well, thank you. I hope we'll, I will not screw this one up. Okay, so we'll have about 15 minutes and 10 minutes of talk and five minutes for Q&A, and I hope it's somewhat interesting to you. Um, first, the facts. The core infrastructure hasn't changed that much um, since the last FOSDEM 2020. We're still running on its Cisco um, ASR 10K for routing, ACLs, NAT64, and DHCP. We have already um, we reused them, several switches that were already here from the last FOSDEM, they're owned by FOSDEM. Um, these are Cisco C7, uh, C3750 switches. We had our old servers, which are now turning 10 this year. Um, they were still here and they will be replaced next year. Um, we have done, like all the years before, everything um, with Prometheus, Loki and Grafana for monitoring our infrastructure because that's uh, what helps us um, running all the conference here. Um, and we've built some public dashboards and this, we just put it out to a VM outside of ULB because we were running out of bandwidth like the years before. Um, and I'll come to that back later. We have a quite beefy video, video infrastructure. Um, you might have seen this one here. It's a video capturing device. It's called the video box here at FOSDEM. Um, it's all public, it's all open source except one, one piece that's in there and uh, you can find it on GitHub if you try to uh, build it yourself. Um, go ahead, just grab the, the GitHub repo and clone it. These devices, there's two of them, one at the camera, one here for the, uh, for the, the presenter's laptop. They sent their streams to a big render farm that we have over in the K building where um, like every year our render farm is running on, on some laptops. Um, the, so laptops send the streams off um, to, uh, to the cloud from Hatzner and from there we just distribute it to the world so everyone at home can see the talks and um, yeah. We have some sort of semi-automated revive on cutting process. Um, those of you who have been talking here maybe have known s -Review for years. This is the first time um, it's running on Kubernetes. Um, so we are trying to go cloud native as well with our infrastructure. Um, just to show how all has um, been held together. Um, this is our video boxes. I don't know if you can see it. Um, we got those um, black magic encoders here that are turning the signals that we get like SDI, HDMI, into a useful uh, signal that we can process with our banana pie that we have in there. Uh, everything's wired up to a dump switch here and then we go out like here and have our, our own switching infrastructure inside those boxes. There's some SSD b below here where we just, in case of network failure, dump everything to the SSD as well. So hopefully everything that was been uh, talked about at the conference is still captured and available in case of a network breakdown. Those boxes also have a nice display for the speaker so we can see if everything's running or it's not running, um, which makes it easy for people to operate these boxes here. You don't have to be a video pro, you just have to wire yourself up to the box, you see a nice FOSDEM logo and see, okay, everything's working and, and you're done and everything's got sound set out. This is like how the video system is actually working. We have, all this can be found on the, on the GitHub. You don't have to take screenshots for that. <laughs> um, um, if you would like to see it, you can, we will tear down this room uh, afterwards so we can just, everyone can have a look at the infrastructure we're using because it's not being used after this talk. Um, you see it's quite some 
interesting things to do. This is um, the instructions that, that um, all our volunteers get um, when they wire up the whole um, buildings here um, on one day on Friday. Um, so they are not here, but they should be given some round of applause because they are volunteers that are doing really the hard work and building up on one day the complete FOSDEM. So maybe it's time for a round of applause for them. Yeah. So here we have the, the, the another thing. This is also um, on the GitHub repo where you can see like where's your where's something coming from. We have the room sound system. This is what you're hearing me through, and we have a camera with audio gear, speaker, laptops, and that's all getting pushed down until it's someone reaches your device down here. There's a ton of services processing it uh, in between, and this is all done with um, almost all done with open source software. Um, expect for the encoder that's running in there, um, which is from Blackmagic Design. So, how is it processed? We have a rendering farm. These are the laptops. It's 27 this year. Um, for those of you do who don't know, um, those laptops are being sold after FOSDEM. So, you, if you want one, you can grab one. This year they're already gone, but for next year, maybe you want to have a cheap device, you can get, have them with everything that's on them because we literally don't care for that, you can have it, um, because everything's been processed after, um, after the FOSDEM. Um, you can see it, we have some, some, some racks where we just put them four-wise, and we have 24 seven of them, uh, no, 27 of them. Um, we have some switch infrastructure um, that process is for, used for processing all that stuff, and this one's not running out of bandwidth, but we're coming back to what's running out of bandwidth. You might see this mess over here. This is our internet, and <laughs> looks like every common internet on the, on the planet. Um, and this is like um, our safety net. We have a big box here where all the streams go, and um, this will be sent out to Bulgaria to the video team right after FOSDEM, so we have a really off-site copy of everything. So the challenges for this year, DNS 6.4. Um, all the years we've been running on bind 9 since ages, and we switched to core DNS, just like testing it on uh, Sunday of FOSDEM 2020. And we, we really saw a significant reduction in CPU usage, and that's why um, we stuck to um, core DNS since then. And this year we also replaced the remaining bind installations that we handled for all the internal DNS and all other recursive stuff that's been used here to, to provide you internet access. Richie always used to give you some timelines, and that's what I'm trying to do as well. Um, there were times when it was mentally challenging for people building up FOSDEM. Um, we got better by year, by year, by year, by doing some sort of automation and getting people used to know what to do and what to do and have um, everything set up before that. Um, we installed routers. Um, you see that there's a slide. It's, it's getting better year of the year. This year we had like um, a very, we, we thought it, it would be okay from what we know. We just set it up in January and everything worked. We came here. Uh, on the 5th of January, I think, um, put everything up and it just worked, which is great, which uh, gives you some sort of um, things not to care about because there were other things to care about. The network, uh, to have it up and running here, um, took us a bit longer this year than the uh, last years because we were playing around with the second uplink that we got. Um, we used to have one, one gigabit uplink, um, last week we got a 10 gigabit uplink and we thought, okay, just enable that and play with it and it would turn out to be not that easy to getting up both of the BGP sessions running and um, doing it properly. Um, that's why it took us a bit longer this year. The monitoring was um, also one thing uh, which really helps us to understand if FOSDEM is ready to go or if something has to stay very, very late here. Um, the last years we've been very, very good at that, 
basically in January everything was f uh, was done, like the last of January, but um, it's January. <laughs> this time it were in the first half of January, everything was set up and uh, was running and it worked. And yeah, that was really great because some people actually got some sleep at FOSDEM, um, didn't uh, need to <laughs> stay here very long because everything was all pre-made and it just just go and uh, look at the dashboard okay this is f this is missing this is missing and just so okay just have them all checked the video build up took a bit longer this year um because of we getting old and rusty at that <laughs> also very many uh, new faces that have never built up such a great conference um this is why we took us a bit longer and the video team also yeah, I think they, they got the, 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 the least amount of sleep of all of the stuff that was running the conference. This was the story so far. Um, we closed FOSDEM 2020. I was also there at 2020. <laughs> um, 2020 was really one of the best ones we ever had from, from a technical perspective. Um, we had everything running via Ansible, just like one command and then wait an hour till everything is deployed and you're gone cool, have some beer, some mate in between, and everything was cool. Then we had this pandemic, just for me, like uh, a week after FOSDEM, everything went down. <laughs> and we you know you had FOSDEM 2021 and 2022, there were no conference here at the ULB. Um, so we had no infrastructure to manage, which was quite okay. We had to do some other things, like most of you have... Um, learned that we have a big metrics installation to run and the FOSDEM conference um, and accompany um, and help you with communicating um, during the conference. Um, then there was this bad thing that the maintainer of the infrastructure left FOSDEM within between these years. And so Richie searched for someone to, um, who was dumb enough to do that. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> so this year we're back again in persona. Sorry? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so after two years, we came looking for the two machines after almost two years. Um, like, no one touched them. They rebooted one or two times due to power outages in the <laughs> server cabinet. Um, but we had a working SSH key. Um, we had tons of updates to install after literally three years. Um, I wonder, nobody broke into that machines because they were publicly exposed on the internet. Um, but only SSH and uh, I think a three-year-old or th three-and-a-half-year-old Prometheus installation, which was full of bugs. Um, yeah. Um, we noticed that the battery controllers uh, the battery packs of the RAID controllers have been depleted, so this was the only thing that actually happened in the three years. The batteries went went um, to zero and didn't set themselves on fire, so everything was okay. The machines worked, um, just a bit of performance degradation, but everything seemed to be okay. And then we tried to run this Ansible thing from the last years, and you know, three years later, um, Ansible has done a lot of things in the time and you want to use a current version of Ansible with that old stuff, um, you end up like this. This is me, yeah. Start from scratch or fix all the Ansible roles. Like there, you can have a look at them. They're also on GitHub. Um, so when we, we, we thought, okay, how do we do this? And said, okay, then just be gone. Ansible be gone. We just fix, fix it. Um, after the FOSDEM, because um, we will have to renew the service anyway, and everything will change. So, so the service timeline, we have the servers alive at the 8th of January, services DNS 6.4 all the way to the mid of January. We had centralized all our locks. This was something Richie was looking for since ages, that we had uh, easy, accessible lock files for everything that's running here at FOSDEM. Um, which was good that we had them because we um, could see things like, oh, the, uh, the internet line that was proposed to be there actually came. We did, nobody told us, but it came up. You see that? We, thanks to the centralized logging, we, we were aware of things like that. And then we could um, go and fire up our 
um, our BGP sessions. Then two days later, so we noticed, okay, firing up the BGP sessions wasn't that a good idea because we lost almost all connectivity. Stop, it says, but I don't care. Yeah, I just keep, I just keep talking, yeah. Um, <laughs> we lost all our connectivity and said, okay, damn it, we're in some sort of panic mode because the reason for looking at the service was, uh, was like this bind security issue that was been, uh, I read the mail at the, the morning of January, uh, 20 morning of January 28th and said, okay, we have to fix the bind installations and then you suddenly can't reach your service anymore and said, okay, are they already hacked or what's going on? And doing some back and forth with our centralized logging, you see that this is Grafana Loki um, that, we, that we leveraged for that. We were kind of like, yeah, it's been, um, it's been really nice to debug things like that. We also noticed that there was a interface constantly flapping um, to our backbone, which we also could um, fix within that session. And after that, we um, said, okay, there are some MTU problems. We um, have, so have to restart BGP and so on and back and forth. And then we finally agreed to just throw away um, the BGP, BGP sessions. Um, go with the one gigabit line and yesterday evening we switched to the 10 gigabit line because we had the congested uplink like since 11 in the morning <laughs> um, so many people using so too much bandwidth um, and since yesterday evening everything is okay it's better and we are on the 10 gigabit link due to the fact that there are not so many people here today yesterday there were quite a bit more um, the link was not fully saturated, but you can you can tell we this is the place where we could use some more bandwidth. It was like I don't know. This is usually time for something to to eat, but at 3:30 we could actually use something of the new bandwidth that we had available. So, if you want to look at all of the things, we have a dashboard put out there uh, publicly. If you want to have a look at the infrastructure and the Ansible repo, that will be fixed to work with current Ansible versions within the next few days. Just clone our infrastructure, clone everything. And if you have any questions, um, I'll be glad to take them. Um, yeah, fire away. As I don't see any questions then, we, we are about to tear down this room after this, so please don't leave anything in here because it will be cleaned and everything will be torn out. If, if anyone else has a question, just... There's one? There's we use lab. The question is, uh, why do you use laptops for rendering? Because of, they have a built-in USB called battery. So in place of the power outage, we can easily run with them. Um, also, they're very cheap for us. Um, we can just use the computing power and sell it at the same price that we bought it to the people here. You get a cheap laptop. We get a, some computing time on them before. And um, that's the main reason for running it on laptops. Well, actually, the question was why you were using Banana Pi. Um, that's a good question. Um, the thing is that the capabilities of the Banana Pi were um, a bit better than the Raspberry Pi, the times the decision was made. Um, if you see, there's a, big, um, there's a big LCD screen in front of uh, the boxes where you can see that thing. I think it was with driving those uh, LCD panels um, and also the computing power available on the Banana Pi that wasn't... Yeah, but actually we have to look that up in the in the repo. There's everything documented. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There's another one in the front. So the question was: Is there are if there are any uh, public dashboards out there? Yeah, we've put some public dashboards on dashboard.grafana.org. Oh, dashboard. 
fosdom.org, sorry, <laughs> uh, which you can have a look at the infrastructure. We used to have some more dashboards, like uh, the t-shirts that have been sold, but due to the fact that we changed the shop, um, we converted to uh, something that we bought to um, an open source solution, and um, the thing is, we fo totally forgot to monitor that. So that's... But there are some dashboards out there to monitor it, and if you want to have some to see something more, just come come to me after the talk, and we'll, I'll show you something more here at the laptop. Okay? Another yeah, another one. The the biggest one standing here. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Actually, the, the, biggest, the, big, uh, the biggest issues we had was um, like um, running all that stuff after three years and, and not having set up everything properly was quite um, challenging. Like on Saturday morning, we had to run and redo the whole um, video installation on, on the K building because of, um, you see those transmitters here, they were not plugged properly and so we had no audio on the stream. This was one thing, and then another very challenging thing was like um, when we played around, and as I say play, we did not engineer anything properly. Um, when we played around with the BGP sessions, it was not clear how long it would take till things um, distributed to the whole net. Um, and we were literally just trying to get information, is it working, is it working not, and till this BGP information propagate from here to the rest of the planet, like Brazil, um, it takes quite some time, and so you can't be sure that you're setting up BGP session, everything works, because um, shit will hit the fan after 10, 20, 30 minutes and not instantly, and so um, it's, quite, um, it's quite a problem to have instant uh, recognition if things are going well or not. So the question was um, if the problems with the Wi-Fi that we had here on, on site were due to the RBGP playing or was it due to something, something, something else, um, solar flares or so. The um, thing is that we had some issues. Um, we're, we've been given access to the WLC, the wireless controllers. You see these um, boxes over there, they're centrally controlled and we have to dig in that. Um, we have some visibility of the infrastructure that's owned by the ULB. They've given us access to that, so we can engineer that. But we're, we're not sh uh, quite sure why was that. Mostly, most of the time, FOSDEM, which is an IPv6 only, was working quite good, except for some Apple devices that do tend to sp just um, set up an IPv4 address, even if there's no proper IPv4, and things get complicated then. FOSDEM dual stack, which is dual stack, um, usually worked for most of the Apple devices, um, but we're, we're not very certain. My, my device, yeah, yeah, you will see that. There's another one. So the question is if the live stream live streams will be made um yeah this we rewindable or or not I honestly I can't tell you that I don't know I can ask the video guys if they're planning that for next year um but there's no plan of that as far as I know the biggest challenge was to to redo things with HDMI over VGA which we had the last years <laughs> this but there's another one So the question is that we're planning to use service. Do we know what and what's planned for next year? Um, we'll have a talk about that next week, I think, and then we go through the post-mortem, which is usually a week after FOSDEM, and then we decide on things to, to be bought for next year because switches are old and um, routers are always old, uh, also old, I think. And just we have, we have one more year on the route to go that should be fine for next year, but what, what after that? We have to make some decisions and some investments for next year to run this stuff, and this will be done next week when we're all 
bit cooled down and <laughs> refreshed after this first time. Anyone else? Yeah, come. So what part of the uh, existing infra are you reusing? And what, what, what else do you, do you bring here for the event? So the question was, what uh, in uh, what are we <laughs> what uh, part of the infrastructure are being re reused and what do we bring for the event? Well, in numbers, it's I think it was three truckloads <laughs> of stuff. No, three because the the the, the video arrived. There's uh, a second. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we bring mainly cameras and those boxes here. Um, switches stay at the ULB. The, most of them stay here, but but um, the the one that didn't stay here. Um, they won't be here next year because ULB is planning to do some uh, some tidying up and giving us here um, some some video ports for our VLANs. They're very very um, good at working with us. Um, we get access to most of the infrastructure. They, we just say tell them what VLAN we would you like to use, and they just throw it on their uh, controllers and bridge it to our servers, and we can use it and make fun with it <laughs> and they will be replacing part of the, um, the network infrastructure next year and we then will have to bring even less gear here yeah uh, which one first yeah So um, the question was, uh, what's about all the other stuff that FOSDEM is doing through the year? Um, do we host it on our own hardware? Is it in the cloud or somewhere? We used, yeah, we have another uh, company called Tigron here. It's a Belgian provider, and there's most of the stuff is running at Tigron during the year. During FOSDEM, we also spin up some VMs um, at Hetzner um, in Germany, and they they are only for during the event and short time after the event. So, like cutting videos and so on in the, in the cloud, and they will be turned off like two or three weeks, and then everything is uh, running on Tigron on our own hardware there as well. So, there was another question. So the question was, what is being used for the communication between volunteers? Um, we have that matrix set up. Um, I don't know who's aware of matrix. It's a real-time communication tool like, um, yeah, like Slack or something like that. Um, we use matrix since 2020 internal for our video team um, for, for communicating. And then we expanded that for uh, 2020 and then w with the pandemic we opened it up for all of the people and now the volunteers are being coordinated to that and we also have our own uh, drunk terrestrial um, that we have here um, especially for this event set up and the volunteers are also um, can can be reached via those uh, radios am I correct volunteers <laughs> yes yes okay we have two volunteers here so yeah we get to them yeah. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to know, or any? Uh, where's the money? The, the 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 question is, where's the money, Lebowski? That's the real phrase from the film. Um, <laughs> I don't actually know. I'm not yet the member of Fosdem stuff, so <laughs> you have to uh, ask someone in a yellow shirt. I, I, there happens to be one next to me. I just throw him the microphone. We have a money box. <laughs> and a bank account. <laughs> Done. 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 Anyone else? Three to one. Thank you very much.